Welcome back to the second devlog for that to-be-named project, Night Game. In the last devlog, I got the very basics of this game laid out, and now I plan on expanding upon it. Just as a disclaimer right now, this video will probably be just a little bit more random than the last one, since I didn't do many of the things I did in any particular order. I just did them when they came to mind, and once that feature was finished, I would move on to the next random feature my ADHD ridden brain could cook up. To get the ball rolling, I started working on some of the features I somehow forgot to add in the last video. I started work on a health counter, and failed just absolutely horrendously at changing the color depending on how much health you had left, but eventually I just gave up on that since I knew I was going to add a better health bar system waiting. And once I got that done, I added a money counter so I could get started on a shop system. And to make the money counter actually useful, I tried to make coins that would drop when enemies died. And the coins would just fly towards the player once I, you know, the coins spawned in. But I just somehow couldn't figure out how to make the coins move towards the player since the move and slide function didn't take arguments in good old form. So I just made it that whenever the enemy kicked the bucket, the money would be added immediately to the counter, and I made the coins moving towards the player and spawning and all that a problem for future me. So once I was done with and out of the way, I thought it would be a good time to change up the random level system so I could add a shop level into it easier. And that somehow started a chain reaction that resulted in every level needing to be remade, I don't want to talk about it. I slightly messed up the formatting for the level scenes in the array I was using to hold them, and that just somehow goofed everything. The only upside to that is now I get to completely remake what I did in the last video, and it can make this video longer, so you get to see it again. Uh, here's those levels being recreated for your viewing pleasure. Once that fiasco was done and over with, I began to actually make the shop that caused all the problems in the first place. And I first started out with the basic layout of the shop and then got sidetracked and made a little shopkeep guy and I thought that was pretty cool. And once I was done with all that, I made items for you to be able to buy when you spawn into the shop. And after that I made sure all the items worked on the player. And then for some reason I decided it would be best to make a second playable character. I decided that the second playable character I would be eventually making was going to be an archer. So obviously I started off with the movement animations and set up the collision boxes and all that random mumbo jumbo like that. And for the script for this character I just 
copied the warrior enemy, or the knight enemy script, and just started changing things to make sure it worked properly for this new archer character. And then I made the weapon, I made it in a separate scene, which was kind of dumb because it didn't really need to be a separate scene, but I digress. Uh, I made it in a separate scene, and then added it to the archer character on a node 2D that would rotate, uh, and I made the node 2D look at the mouse cursor. So once I got the weapon being able to track where you wanted to shoot it, I decided it would be best to make it so you could shoot it. Which was fun, because somehow I completely forgot how to make the arrows go in the proper direction. But eventually I figured it out by looking at an old project that I probably used a tutorial on anyways because I was brand spanking new. And because of that I wasted about an hour of my life for basically no reason. After that, for some reason I decided it would be best if I got to making enemy spawn points. So in the future if I made extra enemy uh, types, I'd be able to randomize which enemies spawned in. After I did that I made a player spawn, so if you chose to play as a different playable character, like the archer or the knight, the game wouldn't implode looking for one or the other in the files, because I'm really bad at making games apparently, and they just like to do that sometimes. After that, since I already had the player spawn points working, and I already had a second playable character, I thought the best choice would be to make an actual character select screen. I'm actually still kind of a little bit proud of it because, I don't know, I just like how it looks and I've never made a character select screen so I thought it was pretty good for my first time making a character select screen. Anyways, here's me making that thing, have fun with the sped up footage and probably comically loud music because I can't edit videos worth a damn. Then, I decided that for some reason I just really need the screen to fade in and out when you change levels, since I somehow forgot that was in the original game, so I got that working after a little bit too. And after that I decided I need to get coins working again, because somehow I remembered that move and collide took arguments still, since I was able to do that with the arrows. I think I might just have undiagnosed ADHD or something, I swear I did. But I did get that working, and I finally got the coins to spawn on dead enemies, and once all the enemies in the room were killed, the coins would fly to the player and be collected, and I was actually really proud of being able to do that for some reason. And finally, after that, I decided I was going to make the archer enemy type to mix up the gameplay loop a little bit. This time I just took the base enemy type that I accidentally forgot to delete, and for some reason I just stuck with it even though it had an old hitbox, no health bar, and didn't even have an area 2D for like everything I needed it to do. But I stuck with it and I added the idle animations and then the movement animations even though I didn't even plan for this enemy to be able to move in the first place. And I got to work making the attack for the archer. 
Now would be a good time to mention that this enemy type was going to be the archer. But the uh, attack was a absolutely just great time because I spent about an hour trying to figure out why the arrows would just crash the game when they spawned in and then once I got all that working I spent another like half an hour trying to figure out why the arrows weren't accurate in the slightest. So like after half an hour, turns out, forgot to subtract the arrows to position from the target position and that just made my entire life hard. And on top of that, I proceeded to do all of this whilst trying to look competent in front of the artist for this team. So I get zero good noodle stars for all of that. But eventually, I got the enemy to work. And I thought it worked well, so I kept it like it was. I'm also about to completely contradict this statement in the outro. I figured that would be a pretty good spot to end this video since I got a lot done and I can't milk this project to its maximum if I complete it on the second video in. In the next video, I'm probably going to rework the attack method of the skeleton archer to make it more interesting to fight. But with all that, I'm just going to let the gameplay go on and I'm going to fade into the darkness. Uh, I'll see you folks around.